there, and welcome to the Stories for Tomorrow podcast. We love chatting with interesting people, people with stories to tell. In each episode, we will be sharing true stories told by real people. We hope you enjoy it. This podcast is sponsored by Clockbox, a digital memory box of your life to be shared with future generations. With your host, Larissa Lima. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Stories for Tomorrow podcast. In today's episode, we're speaking to a lovely human being that I had the pleasure to learn from for a few months in college. He's full of energy and enthusiasm, and I'm sure you will love Bonnie as much as I do. Hello, Bonnie. I'm so happy to have you in the Stars for Tomorrow podcast. How are you today? Larissa, I am fantastically well this morning. Thank you so much for inviting me onto your podcast. It's such an exciting thing to be asked to appear on your show. It's really capturing people's imaginations, especially mine. So I'm thrilled to be here this morning. Ah, that's so happy to hear. Just so everyone knows, I met Bonnie in college, who was one of my favorite teachers ever. And I was very excited to hear he was up to share some of his wisdom and the Stars for Tomorrow podcast today. So tell us a little bit about yourself, where you were originally from. How long have you got? Um, I was born in the south of England, (laughs) small town on the south coast. Now I have been based in Dublin since 2004. I am a creative media scholar and author. In my spare time, I'm a club promoter and occasional DJ, and I collect red soul (laughs) records. But really, my day job, and I suppose how we met Larissa, is I love being in classrooms with inspiring people like yourselves. And I love just having conversations about things that we care about and seeing where these conversations lead. So, yes, we met in class, and I'm thrilled that we are now meeting a year later where some of the things we may have discussed in class have kind of, you have taken them and run with them. That's really thrilling for me. Ah, that's so exciting. A hundred percent. I've learned it so, so much. It was amazing experience. And do you have a favorite childhood memory to share with us today? I do. Now, this is a really hard question and I spent ages thinking about this and I'm just going to (laughs) say the sea. I grew up next to the sea. I love the smell of the sea. I love the sound of the sea. I remember as a child the days when the sea was really rough and stormy. And then I remember other days as a child on the beach where the sea was still and clear. And to this day, I think I I love being by the sea. I love going back to my hometown. There's something comforting about the sound of the sea. It has a kind of a, it almost sounds a bit like the same sort of white noise that babies may hear in the womb. It has that kind of yeah. low, low sound to it. The smell takes me back as well. I love seafood. I love everything about the sea. I love being on a boat where it's gently rocking. If it's too rough, I don't like it. (laughs) So I suppose childhood memories for me were all about the beach and the seaside. And growing up in a small seaside town, it was very important to everybody. And so to this day, I still thrill when I hear a seagull because that reminds me of my childhood (laughs) as well. So, So I think the answer to your question has to be the sea. And it's not my sea. It's anybody who's ever known how wonderful the sea is, I think. Ah, uh, that's lovely. That's amazing. So it's not hard to find details about yourself on the internet. So you have a degree, as you said, you have a degree in film studies, a master's, a PhD. You also taught in Trinity College before, and now you have been working at Dublin Business School for almost 15 years. And your LinkedIn profile says, why don't classrooms look like coffee shops? Which I love it. <laughs> it's really you. <laughs> Well, Joel, thank you. I mean, the thing about it is, and we've both been in classrooms, and education isn't like it was in the 1950s. And all of us in classrooms, people like you coming into classes with all of your life experience, and then me having been teaching now for 22 years, we're still doing things very often like they were done in the 1950s or when I was at university in the 1990s. And so imagine 
walking into a classroom and it looks like your favourite coffee shop. And there are plants and posters and workstations and refreshments. If you work anywhere, Google, Facebook, etc., that's what your experience of the working environment would be like. And yet when you go into a classroom, it's almost like primary school. So I really do think that classrooms should look like coffee shops. I think that when you are engaging with, you probably remember Moodle, the virtual learning environment. Yeah. I think virtual learning environment should look like Animal Crossing. And it should be that you have that game experience with your learning environment because most people who come into that learning environment have that experience from growing up. And again, most virtual learning environments look like banking websites from the 1990s. And so we have a lot to learn. And interestingly, Larissa, we have a lot to learn from people like you that come into the classroom. Because gone are the days where lecturers tell people things. Lecturers need to listen more and speak less and just create opportunities for conversation. So a classroom like a coffee shop is all about conversation. Or if you think about, if you go into restaurants like Wagamama, where you have long communal tables, that should be another classroom experience. Everybody sitting around the same table like they would be at work. But hey, don't get me started because we could talk about yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to have a classroom like that. It's definitely more interactive and you make more friends, mainly when you're not from the country. Like Dublin Business School has many international students and most of them like don't know anyone here. So it yeah. definitely would be an amazing option and would make everything a way easier. So can't wait for those days. Well, let's be honest, Chris. <laughs> it's not hard to do. You just need to buy a couch instead of a desk. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how hard is that? Or buy a potted plant and put it in the corner and paint the room, put blackboards so that people can move around and write on the blackboards and think and have a space in a classroom where you can just sit and think on your own or listen to something. Don't always be just looking to the front, hoping that you write down everything your lecturer says in case you need it in the future. So maybe one day you might be designing innovative classrooms. Oh, I <laughs> let's see, let's see. A hundred percent will be amazing. <laughs> so I'm sure that Bonnie, it's a way beyond the fun teacher that encourages us to try new things and use our creativity. So my question is, who is Bonnie? So let's say that you have a clock box time capsule and mm-hmm. you will be open in 50 years. So what would you like to have in there to describe who you are? Wow, That's a good one. this is a good question. <laughs> you weren't expecting for this one. <laughs> ah, this is deep, my friend. This is deep. Yeah. Well, I've got two things, and it's a cliche because all of us have got timelines on Facebook or Instagram which used to have those slogans that would say things like, today is the first day of the rest of your life, etc., cetera, et cetera. Yeah. <laughs> but one of the real lessons I've learned in my life is that genuinely anything is possible. I grew up, as I said, in a small seaside town. Nobody at school believed in me. Everybody at school said I would just fail and lead a miserable life. It took me until I was 26 to go to university for the first time. And it was the first thing I found in my life that I could actually do. And that's why we're talking today. So I would say the first thing that goes into my clock box would just be the slogan or the hashtag, anything is possible. Because it is really true that none of us know what we're capable of, and we just need something or a space somewhere where we get the chance to find out who we are. So the first thing that goes into my clock box is a hashtag, anything is possible. And I I still believe today, after 22 years of teaching, that really all it actually is is 22 years of more learning. And I'm still learning today, and being here with you this morning is a learning opportunity for me. So the first thing that goes into it is my hashtag, anything is possible. Now, I thought about the second thing as well, and there's going to be photos, although I hate having my photo taken, and there's going to be video, and I really don't like the sound of my own voice that much, (laughs) but I'm going to put a letter in. And so I'm going to write a letter, because nobody writes letters by hand anymore, and being a doctor... I have really bad handwriting because that's the cliche, (laughs) even though I'm not a medical doctor. But I just want to write a letter to everybody I know and everybody I love just saying thank you for the chance to know and love them. And that's all I want to do. And 
you know, it's it may seem like a small thing, but we're so lucky to meet the people we meet. And we're so lucky to, I've got a 16-year-old daughter, and it's been the biggest thrill of my life to actually meet her. And I never thought I would grow up and have a child. It always seemed that that would be something that other people did. So every day I'm just so mindful of how wonderful it is to just have people in your lives or in your life. And so I think I would just so hashtag anything as possible and then a letter just thanking everybody for the chance to get to know them and to love them. And also some of the people that would be receiving a letter I wouldn't have seen for years, you know, or some, some of them are probably dead. So all in all, because I'm guessing that Clockbox can transcend all boundaries, they're the yes. things that I'm going to be putting in because I think they say everything about me. I mean, I was a late starter when it came to education. I was bullied at school. I was incredibly shy. So every time I'm in the classroom with people like yourselves, it has taken me a lot to get there because I was really destroyed as a teenager and just had no confidence. So I never take it for granted. And I always know that when I'm in the classroom with people like yourselves, it's a real privilege for me to do something I love doing. So I would like to think that the clock box with my name on it, and it will be Barney, it won't be Dr. Barnaby Taylor, will just be a simple story about an ordinary person who just was lucky enough to find something he could do and has been doing it ever since. And doing that has opened up so many possibilities in my in my life. I mean, and like yourself, though, I mean, one of the things that education did for me is it allowed me to travel. And I, Now, obviously, I only moved from England to Ireland, but... For a small town boy with very limited outlook to start a new life in a country where you don't know a single person yes. was profound, I think. And I, again, the chances, the opportunities I've had since I've moved to Dublin certainly wouldn't ever see them as anything other than wonderful. So I suppose I just feel lucky in many ways, Larissa. I just think that a lot of people spend their whole lives looking for something and never find it. And then wish they were doing something other than what they are me than what they're doing i wake up every morning now always tired but then that's another story and i just can't <laughs> wait to see what happens sometimes it's teaching and i love that because the beauty of teaching is you don't know what people are going to say and that's great if it was all prepared before you went in you may as well not bother and yeah. it means that i meet really creative vital people like yourself and you have such energy with everything you do that it kind of I'm not stealing your energy but I'd like to think a small <laughs> part of your energy moves me forward on a daily basis so Definitely. that's where we are my friend ah uh, that's so nice would you like to pass on your legacy and never be forgotten download an easy guide on how to create a digital time capsule from this podcast description and save your memories forever for future generations this podcast is sponsored by Clockbox, a digital memory box of your life. And just going back, you're saying that you're a shy uh, teenager. I would never in a million years imagine it because you're so like, you know, very communicative and have many like I, I guess you have many friends because everyone in the classroom wanted to be your friend. Like we're all excited for your class. And it's like, it's the only class that we wanted the cameras on. <laughs> Larissa, that's it's fantastic. It's so funny. <laughs> but you're very kind. But look, I mean, let's be honest. Education, like everything else, is a commodity. And it, it, my job is not to tell you things, not to teach. I don't believe my job is to teach. My job is just to be passionate and to hope that if I'm passionate on a regular basis, it will spark other people's passion. And so it's really nice to hear the feedback. And I love classes <laughs> like yours. And I loved having you in the class because you always had insight. You always had something to say. But really and truly, I, I can only think that it's kind of, I feed off of people's enthusiasm. So to come into the classroom, and I know we were online and that's been hard for everybody, but it's a great thing to look back on. But I would look forward to coming into your classes because I knew there was going to be conversation. And this is how humans work, isn't it? We just talk. So I, I've never seen myself as a teacher. I'm just someone that you can have a conversation with. And if it helps, 
that you've had a conversation with me, then fantastic. If not, we'll keep talking until we find some common ground, I suppose. Definitely. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, that's so nice. And a, a deep question, now, after okay. another deep question. <laughs> what was the most important thing that you've learned in life? Ah, oh, okay. I think, I think it is actually to not listen to other people. Because as I said, I grew up, I went to, I grew up in the, in the 70s and 80s in, in Britain, in England, and it was a miserable time in the country, lots of unhappiness. My mum was a single parent, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I went to a really nasty school that was full of bullies. And basically, my teenage years were about doubt and discomfort and shyness i used to cross over the road there was a girls school near us an all girls school and if i saw them coming towards if i saw two or three girls when i was 14 walking towards me and i was on my own i'd cross over the road because i was that shy <laughs> seriously i mean like i look back now and i just imagine my time my myself at the time and i think it's okay now That it happened to me at the time, it was miserable. And as I said, I was bullied for two years at school by two, two boys, and it was really unhappy. But I'm here now, and we all have stories, we all have journeys. And so I just think, and it took me a while to do this, and but I think you just have to, at some stage, start listening to yourself and yes. not listen to other people because other people will always tell you you can't do something. Or more and often, they'll say, you shouldn't do something. But I really think, now, I don't always get it right. I get it wrong on a daily basis, but I'm okay with that. But I think we have to listen to ourselves and trust ourselves. And if we have an instinct to at least explore it, if we have a passion to uh, engage with that passion and not deny it. And the beauty of being human is that we get things wrong. But that's when we learn, isn't it? So if, if I try something and it doesn't work, I'm disappointed because that's natural. I may be upset because I'm only human. But I will try and find a way to look at it and say, well, okay, this didn't work. What happens if I did the same thing slightly differently? Or how about I find someone who can help me do it? Because that's the other thing I've learned is that, you know, having grown up feeling very isolated, Actually, one of the things I love the most is working with other people, being in groups, yeah. being in teams. It's such a thrill to hear other people's ideas and to see how you can connect with them. So I think the one deep or the, the answer to your profoundly deep question is <laughs> just, to, just to listen to yourself and believe in yourself, maybe trust. Now, it sounds like the lyrics to pop songs when you say that, yeah. but like I, I can only say... There was a time when I didn't believe in myself. I thought I'd never do anything. And that's fine because also it means now, as a father, I try my hardest to encourage my daughter to believe in herself. Now, she's a teenager, so that's a different story in many ways. Oh, but really, <laughs> absolutely. And <laughs> I wouldn't have it any other way. But like, if I can just encourage anybody to have a little bit of faith in themselves, then it's been a good day. Oh, that's lovely. Love it. Love it. And just one final question before we wrap it up. What would you have in a time capsule for your daughter beside the letter that we already talked about? Would you have anything else for her in specific? Yeah, you're going to make me cry now, I think. So I'm going to have to be very <laughs> careful. It's an interesting thing because as soon as you're responsible for someone else, like, i.e. you become a parent or et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. It is the same with friends in many ways or brothers. I've got a brother and I feel very responsible for him. But I think the one thing that I would want to put into the clock box for my daughter, Iris, who I absolutely adore, it would just be some kind of assurance that when things in the future aren't great, i.e. possibly when I'm not around, that she will be okay because we always are. And so, and I'm not going to get too emotional because like I do get very, <laughs> but it's important to do, not deny our emotions. But I think I would like to just put into the clock box some confidence for her so yes. that there will be times, like all of us, where she will doubt herself or there will be times in the future when I'm not around where things won't go as well as she was hoping because it's human. Relationships fail, things, we are all disappointed. So if I could put 
some assurance in there, I think that would be a good thing. But there's one final thing, which isn't a childhood memory, but is one of the most overriding memories in my life. And if I could somehow bottle it and put it into the capsule as well, I would because it would be for Iris, my daughter. And that was the smell of her head when she was born and young because Aww. babies smell really wonderful. And I remember when she was a couple of months old, you used to, I used to be able to hold her because that's what you do with your children. <laughs> and I would smell her, the top of her head, and it used to have this, and I can still smell it in my nose today. It has this wonderful com- combination of panic because I was a new father and I didn't know what to do, <laughs> but also of kind of like her skin and soap and warmth because she was like all babies, a warm little baby. So this kind of aroma, I mean, if you uh, maybe if it was turned into a candle or something so she could, because she, you can't smell the top of your own head, can you? You have no, no. way of knowing. <laughs> and also when you're a baby, how would you know? But I would love her yeah. to know how oh, wonderful so cute. that, you know, it was as another memory of her before we were able to make Real memories. Now, we do lots of things together now. During the lockdown, we just went out driving a lot because we could and we would chat in the car and listen to music until the guards told us to go home and we cook together. We like to try food and eat in restaurants and things, uh, watch television together. So I have all of those memories that she also has, but I'd like her to know something about who she was before she was able to really form her own memories. So a bottled smell of the top of my daughter's head when she was a baby. I'm not sure if that answers your question, but that's all I've got for you. Uh, that's cute, though. That's cute. I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> well, I tell you oh, what, my God. Let's get emotional together. I mean, that's, yeah. that's, we're allowed to, aren't we? We're only human, my friend. I mean, we, we spend most of our lives holding back emotions, denying emotions, or telling ourselves that's not how we really feel. And, you know, when it's appropriate and when it is safe to do so, it's perfectly okay to laugh and to cry and to be happy and to be sad and to find a way in which we can balance all of these things in our life so that we just have an outlet because otherwise we just become like robots. And who wants to be a robot? No one. (laughs) Not me and not you. I can tell you you're a robot. Uh, that was lovely, uh, Bonnie. I really had like an amazing time recording this interview with you. And we had a little chat before as well. So it was really, really good to have in the Star Search Tomorrow podcast. And thank you so much for all the support that you're giving us. And uh, thanks for taking the time to speak with us today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, I was thrilled when you invited me. I've always enjoyed chatting with you. I could chat with you for far longer, but your listeners are going <laughs> to press stop yeah, at this exactly. stage. But listen, it's just been, I love hearing people's stories and your story is so fascinating and you are steering your story in such interesting directions. For me, it's a privilege to be on your show, and I look forward to hearing and listening to many more of your stories on many more of your shows. So, Larissa, thank you so much. It's been a real honor to be a guest on your podcast. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of Stories for Tomorrow. If you're enjoying the show, please feel free to rate, Subscribe and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. This podcast is sponsored by Clockbox, a digital memory box of your life to be shared with future generations. Thanks again for tuning in and we'll catch you in the next episode.